Hello, I'm Shobha from Citizen News Service, and I welcome you all to today's special panel discussion on It's Time to End Latent Tuberculosis 2 If We Want to End TB by 2030. This discussion, which is being held in the lead up to World TB Day 2019, is hosted by CNS and is part of CNS Live e conversation sessions. It is being live streamed on Facebook and YouTube. This year's theme of the World TB Day is it's time. It's time to do so many things. And indeed, it is high time to focus our attention to tackling latent TB infection alongside taking other measures to end TB. As we know, an estimated 25 to 30% of the world's population is infected with latent TB. For India, the figure is pegged at 40%. While persons with latent TB infection are not infectious and cannot spread TB infection to others, but without treatment, about 5 to 10% of them would develop active TB disease, especially those who got newly infected during the last one, two years and then become infectious. It is these people who got newly infected with latent TB and progressed to active TB, which will equal the number of new active TB infections. So every single case of active TB disease comes from an individual with latent TB infection. We have to ensure we are not adding to this pool of latent TB, Rather, it has to be emptied. And if we fail to do so, it will be not possible to eliminate TB. Without much ado, let us now hear from our eminent panelists on how we can accelerate progress towards eliminating latent TB as well, if we want to end tuberculosis by 2030. We have with us today, Dr. Shibhu Balakrishnan, a noted TB expert, from RNTCP Kerala State of India. Then we have Dr. Erlina Burhan, advisor to Stop TB Partnership Indonesia, and also a member of the board of directors at the International Union of Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, or the union as it is commonly known as. We also have with us Dr. Nguyen Viet Nung, head of the Vietnam's National TB Program and Dr. Shibu Vijayan, Acting Global TB Technical Director at PATH, and Dr. R.K. Sood, District TB Officer from Kangra, Himachal Pradesh, India. Uh, so we will just begin, uh, and uh, uh, we will begin with uh, Shibu Balakrishnan, uh, Dr. Balakrishnan, you have been at the forefront of TB control in Kerala, a state which has committed to eliminate latent TB2 as part of its efforts to end TB. Uh, Kerala's TB decline rate is 4%, which is way above the global average of less than 2%. And the state also prides itself in having identified every single case of active TB. Uh, Dr. Balakrishnan, can you share more on how Kerala is tackling latent TB and how other states can emulate this example? Over to you, Dr. Balakrishnan. Can you please unmute yourself? Yes, Dr. Balakrishnan, we are waiting to hear from you. We can't hear you. Dr. 
Dr. Balakrishnan, please uh, unmute yourself if you have muted yourself at your end. Maybe uh, is there a technical problem at his end, perhaps? Uh. Okay, uh, Shibu Vijayan, can we begin uh, uh, and move on to the global scenario? Uh, uh, Dr. Vijayan, could you share the commitments which have been made at the UNHLM on TB, which was held last September? Does that include management of latent TB infection? And what needs to be done urgently to break the chain of TB transmission? Uh, yes, absolutely, Ashley. Uh, so now we are in the right time uh, uh, in, the, in the helm of all affairs of uh, and well TB days on the, uh, uh, in, in this week, actually, the weekend is the well TB day. Uh, so it's the right time to discuss all these things now. Uh, so as we speak, we are actually sitting on 1.6 billion uh, Having said that, that uh, all the processes are not going to be actually break down the disease. So that's that's the level of uh, problem that we are thinking about. Uh, we are we have to actually handle that, that situation. Uh, I mean, given that uh, the burden of disease is such high, and 66 percentage of that actually lies in Asia, and as you know, major chunk of that also will actually fall in, in India. Uh, so given that context, the UN high level mission uh, mission on, on TB, when they met uh, in New York uh, last year, uh, made the commitment of actually uh, treating, detecting and diagnosing and treating latent TB infection. Uh, and they made a commitment of 30 million cases, which includes 4 million children, which is actually so encouraging. I like children. Uh, and and 20 million household contacts, and 6 million pe people living with HIV. So that's the level of global commitment now we actually talk about, uh, with the millions of cases need to be detected and treated and for latent TB infections. Uh, so the advantage of, uh, 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 of, of that, I mean, the, the, the major, also actually uh, uh, kind of use a sense of the prioritization that's where uh, the household contact actually 20 million household contact get right prioritized within that. So all these are actually starting steps, and now we have newer tools. So we are at the, again, I'm 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 I'm, I'm emphasizing we are at the right time. Uh, so LA, we didn't have actually right tools to actually uh, actually manage and detect and treat a, uh, a latent TB infection. Uh, so though we have the right tools, uh, I think the systems and uh, the preparation from the health systems, the uh, uh, preparation from the private healthcare providers, preparation of the community also need to be actually now geared up and tested. Uh, so uh, what is actually lacking is that uh, uh, it's kind of the initial inertia, the initial momentum to actually kickstart some of this uh, intervention uh, and and kind of tease the uh, whole world. Hey guys, this is, a, this is a solution. So probably you have the right tools, and this is how we put together all the tools to have the right solution in front of you. I think that's kind of contextual uh, solutions need to be brought in uh, uh, to uh, to keep the entire world how we tackle uh, the infection. So in that context, the stop TB has actually put together the larger partnerships of uh, TB, uh, which is in fact uh, uh, focusing on urban population. Uh, in uh, nurturing local coalitions uh, to work on uh, uh, work, right, to work on to actually have uh, islands of TB elimination. One of the one of the it's a multi pronged approach of uh, search, treat, find, and prevent TB. Uh, one of the key interventions in that is the latent TB infections. Uh, so, though we had evidence from the past, which is compelling evidence of uh, also treating the rate of uh, decline of incident was actually kind of uh, encouraging or uh, I would say in exponential levels, uh, we somehow actually uh, went into uh, treating, not treating latent TB uh, very aggressively. So, the zero TB initiatives, uh, which encompasses a 360 degree approach of uh, managing TB, 
have a key compound related DB infection. And we have now few cities actually been doing that. So I'm eagerly waiting for the research to come out and then probably advocate for that in the other part of the world. Over to you. Uh, I think uh, we can go back to uh, Dr. Shibu Balakrishnan, if he's there. Dr. Yes. Shibu Balakrishnan. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Shobha, uh, and uh, uh, good day to all. I uh, hope I'm audible. Yes, very big. Uh, thank you, yes. Doctor. Yes. Thank you, Doctor Vijayan, for that uh, nice uh, opening remarks. Uh, now you mentioned about the TB-free islands. I, I am going to speak about such an island, uh, which is called Kerala. It's a state. So it's a southernmost uh, province of India, where some of the uh, very active or proactive uh, steps are uh, being taken for complete elimination of tuberculosis in the next uh, few years. So as uh, most of you know, Kerala is uh, in the southernmost tip of India, which is a 34 million population state, uh, which is approximately 650 per square kilometer population density with a family size of 3.7. These are all important when we uh, work on TB elimination. It has a very robust general health system. Uh, the health indices of Kerala uh, are very good. Uh, in fact, its uh, infant mortality rate is uh, 10, and the maternal mortality ratio is 40. And it has 100% vaccine preventable disease immunization coverage. And the life expectancy is uh, pretty high compared to other parts of the country, which is 74 at birth. And the adult literacy rate is uh, 94%. This all to a successful tuberculosis elimination program. Uh, when we discuss about the TB epidemiology of uh, the state that has the highest tuberculosis, presumptive tuberculosis uh, case test rate, it is uh, 1,500 per 100,000 uh, is, the, is the test rate. Uh, with this high test rate, its public notification is declining at a rate of 4% per annum. And its private drug sale also is decreasing at a rate of 7% per annum. And there is a right of uh, age-specific notification, which uh, we uh, expect in uh, a, a, a population where TB incidence is declining. That is a 33% of decline of age-specific notification in the age below 35 years, and 8% increase in the age-specific notification above the age of 65 years. The annual risk of tuberculosis infection, which denotes the transmission of tuberculosis, is very low in the state. In fact, the prevalence of uh, latent TB infection among the children is less than 3%. The uh, rifampicin resistance among the TB patients, all TB patients undergo a universal DST for rifampicin with expert, and it is only 1.2%. And the two-year recurrence rate uh, of the treated uh, uh, TB cases, successfully treated TB cases, just 3%. Mm -hmm. The main drivers, the determinants of tuberculosis in uh, the state are age, uh, contact with uh, an operant case of tuberculosis, and diabetes. You know, the prevalence of uh, diabetes in Kerala is quite high. One in every five adults in the state are diabetic, and one in every two TB cases are also diabetic. And the state is, uh, state government is so much committed towards uh, TB elimination. And uh, 2017, the state has conducted a, an international consultative workshop for TB elimination. Uh, the state has a very empowered local self government system. Uh, the lowest tier of the local self government is called a panchayat, where approximately 25,000 population. Uh, they decide on their health priorities and move ahead. Uh, there are 1,000 panchayats in the state. All the panchayats have formed a TB elimination task force during uh, 2018. 
with a team to uh, free the, the, the panchayat from TB called My TB Free Panchayat. That's the theme for uh, TB elimination mission for uh, the state. Uh, the TB elimination task force in each panchayat, they have conducted a TB vulnerability survey of the entire citizens in Kerala. The 34 million citizens have been surveyed for uh, GB vulnerabilities, uh, for example, diabetes, old age, contact with GB, uh, tuber uh, tobacco usage, uh, alcohol, malignancies, immunosuppression status, immunosuppressive therapy, and uh, transplant, and some highly vulnerable uh, occupations like uh, the mine uh, quarry occupation. So these vulnerabilities are mapped. Approximately 2 million individuals, citizens, were mapped to have some kind of vulnerability. And the state is now moving ahead with active case search among these vulnerable individuals. So uh, once they do an active case search among the individuals, they diagnose TB cases. To all the diagnosed TB cases, the state provide an airborne, household airborne infection control kit to prevent infection to further infection to uh, the household contact. So here, uh, the state has prepared itself for a uh, uh, TB elimination uh, task. Uh, it's ready with uh, three specific steps for uh, uh, TB elimination, including the latent TB diagnosis and management. What the state has now is it's a database of eligible citizens for LTBI diagnosis and management. Uh, with the various stratified vulnerable oh. species. And uh, there is a background airborne infection control to prevent reinfection. Once you diagnose and treat uh, a guy with a latent TB infection, we need to prevent a reinfection. So we need a background uh, uh, TB airborne infection uh, prevention. And then there is a system to actively search for diagnosis uh, and management of, I mean, I, I search for active TB cases, early diagnosis and management of active TB cases. These three steps are there in the state, the state is prepared. But what is required? According to the plan for diagnosis and management, uh, the state has planned to do LTBA diagnosis and management in two districts called Iduki and Wayanad. In Iduki district, uh, the uh, notification of incident TB cases is as low as 40, 40 uh, uh, per 100,000 population. And in Wayana district, uh, the incident TB case notification is as low as 50, 50 per 100,000 population. Uh, but the state needs good tools. Uh, still, uh, there are discussions going on whether to use Manto, if at all, uh, 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 standardized uh, PPD is not available. Uh, not only in the state across the uh, globe, that's the situation. And uh, to use an IGRA based, uh, the tube based test uh, collection, transportation of blood samples uh, within, uh, say, 12 to 14 hours from the periphery to a laboratory at the center is, is a difficult task. And we are looking forward also for a IGRA based skin test. Uh, it's, it's being evaluated. Once it has, it, it has a very good application. That's what we heard. And we are looking forward to that. And we need a shorter, effective regime. The current regime, as per the national policy to treat uh, the PLHIV, is uh, uh, 180 days uh, uh, INH 300 milligram, which may not be very much practical for the non-HIV adults. So we need to have a regime like 3HP. It's, it's costly on one side. It has some disadvantages as towards the adverse reaction. So we are looking forward to uh, the uh, good test tool and a good uh, treatment regime. That's how the state is placed now. Uh, it's ready to move ahead with uh, later TB diagnosis and management. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Balakrishnan. Uh, Kerala's health system indeed is very strong and its human development index is also high. And all of this, I think it was a robust multi-sectoral approach. Yeah. Now moving, moving from India to Indonesia, I request Dr. Arlina Burhan to share how important it is to address latent TB infection if we want to get to zero for TB. And how is Indonesia dealing with latent TB and infection control? 
Over to you, Erlina. Thank you. So, in Indonesia, even though we are still struggling with uh, curing active TB, but now our NPP is uh, shifting to look of We have lost you, Erlino. We can't hear you now. Yes, yes, now we can hear you. Yeah, can you hear me yes, now? Yes, 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 we can hear you. Yes, yes, please go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so our NTP now is still focusing, our NTP now is still focusing uh, over the killed under five and also uh, treating Latin TB among uh, HIV infected patients, which is, I think, there is a uh, uh, still. We are losing it's yes, me yes, again. Yes, in, in so I just would like to yes. say that uh, our country, Indonesia, yeah, our country, Indonesia, uh, not, need to move on, not uh, uh, doing business as usual, right? As what we are doing now, only focus on children under five and uh, Latin TB among HIV infected. So I think we should also targeting other group, and this target group already identified in our national guideline. Those are uh, adults with immunocompromised situation, uh, patient with uh, hemodialysis, and also uh, the uh, cancer patient with chemotherapy. That's we identify. should be treated uh, this is a move uh, of Indonesian and to we are losing you in between Arlina I think maybe some internet problem. We have lost you again. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. We can hear you now. Yes. Hear me now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. I. You want to say something else? Do you want to continue? Because we are losing you in between. Yes. Yes. Yes, please go yes. ahead. Yes. What I'm trying yes, yeah, what I'm trying to say is that if we want to uh NTB uh, of two thousand thirty, we have to not only that <coughs> or any uh, individuals with immunocompromised, such as those who are under uh, steroid treatment, long uh, steroid treatment, and also right now we found a lot of TB patients among cancer patients after uh, chemotherapy, and also uh, patients with rheumatoid arthritis uh, that use also steroids. So I think if the country such Indonesia, the endemic country such Indonesia, who assume to have also high number of Latin TB, we should uh, uh, target in treating. So not only using uh, Mantu test, which is uh, sometimes is, uh, difficult to access, but also I think the government should also provide with other tests for diagnosis Latin TB. But yes, I understand this is a very expensive, but 
there are people who willing to pay uh, and also willing to be treated but now a lot of uh, physicians still afraid treating latent TB because uh, they have a, a belief or misperception uh, latent TB they are af afraid of uh, uh, developing a more resistant to the drug we need uh, to make them believe that if latent TB uh, treated by one drug it won't uh, develop uh, mono resistant to INH or rifampicin or other drug. As long as we sure we make sure that TB active is being uh, excluded, and I, we and I'm very happy now with the situation in the country. The Latin TB diagnosis and treatment of Latin TB is already. Uh, include in our national guideline but yes we have problem with implementation so I think we still need to catching up and to make sure that implementation is in place thank you very much thank you Erlina uh, and from uh, Indonesia we move on to Vietnam uh, Dr. No, what are your thoughts on management and treatment of latent TB? And is it on the agenda of Vietnam's national TB program? Over to you, Dr. No. Yes, Dr. No. Yes. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. But I, I cannot share the screen. Uh, it's not, not necessary, right? No, not necessary. You can speak. We would love to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to join you uh, today. Uh, I am um, told that uh, with the five minutes. So, I would like to share with you the scan-up of the LTBI screening, diagnosis, and treatment in terms of the five treat on NTB. It is the initiative of the WHO. So, um, as you know, how TB to be ended globally, that means we need to understand the nature of the game. We see that modeling, uh, we see that the five model. Number one, mitigate risk factor. The second, prevent infection. The third, we are doing at the moment intensively that the treating active TB. Of course, we find all and the treat active TB, but we're missing one thing that the treat latent TB. That is very important. And we know that if uh, we only treat active TB, we cannot achieve the game. Uh, we cannot achieve the end uh, TB. So we need to, uh, how to say, uh, together with the treat on the active TB and the treating latent tuberculosis. As the modeling uh, already is, um, uh, we, we understand the nature of the game. So as you know, if we can imagine the ending tuberculosis carrying by Vietnam Airlines, for example, the plan with the two engine. The engine one should be the detect and treat on active TB case. That means we can eliminate transmission sources. The second win, they're very important, that the latent TB treatment, that means we can avoid transition from the infection to active TB disease. So that is, so we see that very important, the two wing. We cannot uh, um, um, fly uh, with uh, only one wing. So in Vietnam, we um, have in guideline 
uh, both uh, um, number one, we intensify uh, case fighting and the treating on active uh, TB case. And the second, now we would like to scan up with the latent TB treatment. So uh, screening subject in community, we already in the guideline that household or close contact among the children under five years old, that is recommended by WHO. And the HIV infected uh, people with the contact. So uh, two uh, subjects, we uh, provide uh, IPT, that uh, uh, isolated uh, preventive therapy. And now we are uh, uh, scanned up with the other group. But uh, we have challenge with the test. If we come to other group, we need to uh, test if the, the, the subject uh, eligible for the uh, latent TB treatment because uh, this is the benefit most. With um, uh, the contact um, children under five and the HIV uh, people, we do not need to test. But the other group, when we scan up other group, we need to the test. So now in Vietnam, we are still using uh, TST and uh, in the hospital, we uh, use uh, INGRA and we're thinking about the CTB or the nice skin test from Russia, CTB from Europe, but not yet, the, the two later is not yet um, uh, feasible in Vietnam. And we already set up the management angolism. That means that we are how to detect the latent TB uh, infection, that means identify the latent TB infection in children, in adults, in the people living with us. And uh, how to rule out the TB symptom, rule out the TB active TB, and then go to the uh, latent TB treatment. And now we scan up. That's the other group. Uh, we intend to uh, uh, to include the firstly is, um, the risk group first and the other uh, risk group, that means the contact, diabetes, and uh, of course HIV is uh, now currently. And uh, we stand up with uh, the regimen. In the, um, Vietnam, we uh, still use um, IPT, INS, uh, six months for children and uh, nine months for adults. But we are planning to use um, HP, I mean, the uh, cell doses uh, to become available. To, and we will also set up the indicator for this. How many um, people screen, how many um, people already eligible, and how many is the follow-up, how many is the um, complex. That is um, the latent TB treatment uh, skin up in uh, Vietnam. We would like to share with you and uh, happy uh, to um, have your question. And one thing um, for, the, for the research, you know that um, contact with the MDRTB, there is a problem for the preventive therapy. So now we are doing with the research, the quite big research, the name is the V-Queen. We use a nervoproxacin for the latent TB treatment for the people contact with the MDRTB. We expect the, um, um, the results come out in the two years. So I might be able to provide you more evidence for the, for the MDRTB contact, uh, latent TB treatment. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. No. Uh, coming back to India, uh, my next question is to Dr. R.K. Sood. Uh, Dr. Sood, your state of Himachal Pradesh aims to end tuberculosis uh, in the state by 2021, which is four years ahead of India's target and nine years ahead of the global target to end TB by 2030. So you have uh, just about 33 months left to do so. And how do you propose to achieve this target? And what is your state doing to empty the pool of latent TB to prevent further TB transmission? Pertinent issue that uh, uh, goals have been put over too ambitiously. And uh, rather than uh, putting the target ahead, has increased the momentum for the program. Those strategies have not yet uh, are not yet in place. So uh, I would like to share the kids project of the uh, Tibetan community, which they are doing with the John Hopkins. 
and uh, uh, the, uh, they've done screening the rooms where uh, the children, there are residential hostels, and uh, one fifth of the children are going to have latent and uh, among them, they were able to put a good number, uh, around 85% on treatment, and uh, they were able to achieve 95% successful completion rates. And from there, we have a lot of lessons learned in that uh, uh, within uh, this, uh, uh, what you call, uh, latent TB uh, screening in the school, the Zero uh, TB Kids project. Uh, one good thing that we did was we contacted the parents, they uh, obtained written consent, and uh, they were involving the school management and the parents in the, uh, in the management of latent TB. It's quite challenging when, uh, when you don't have symptoms uh, to get the Started by the physician, the, honestly, but uh, the treatment rates were not equally good. So I think the schools were, uh, even the monasteries are closed communities. Like the schools, they have crowding, but uh, like compliance rates were not as well in the monasteries as as they had. It. So these have some implications if we want to scale up for our uh, what they call national programs. So I think uh, this uh, is published, so I thought it's very relevant to share in the context of uh, TB elimination. In addition, for the strategy, uh, we are going in for the active case finding. So to be very honest, uh, the quality of active case finding is not very good. Uh, the yield is not as good as we would expect it to be. And uh, that may have something to do with training issues, something to do with commitment issues. And uh, the yield that we expect in active case finding is not coming up. So that's a very big challenge with the level of investment that goes into active case finding. Uh, the door-to-door -door, uh, uh, team, and uh, we're not getting as good results as we would like to get. Other thing that we are trying to do is with this nutritional support thing coming into the TV program in India, people are coming up, coming, op opening up. And we are trying to activate our TV forums. We recently had our first meeting of the TV forum and uh, uh, due to stigma, very few patients uh, came up. But now uh, in the run up to the World TV Day, uh, we are having a big contest and uh, getting patients to lead the campaign. So with this openness coming into the program, and uh, the more and more dialogue we are able to get, I think we'll be able to move ahead. And uh, uh, later TV, still we need more learning experience. Uh, in the practical setting, how to actually get it done, because in theory, it's a good thing. Uh, if we have, I think, the Tibetan project, they use the Rifampicin, uh, four months regimen uh, that was the well tolerated one, but I think this uh, if we get the new regimen, the Rifampicin INH weekly regimen, I think that will be much more easier to uh, administer and comply. So I think uh, let's uh, learn from each other and uh, uh, we have a very tight schedule ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sooth, and we are really proud of your dedication uh, and your work which you are doing in the field of TB control. Uh, we now open the question and answer session and invite participants for their comments and suggestions. Uh, you can click on the Q&A box which you must be seeing on the screen and then type your question. Uh, if you wish to speak, you may please click on the virtual hand you see on the screen. Uh, we all already have a lot of questions which have come in. Uh, uh, we have a very senior journalist from India, uh, Swapna Majumdar. Uh, Swapna, would you like to ask the question yourself? Although you have sent your question uh, in the Q&A box, but would you like to ask yourself? Uh, 
as okay i i will ask the question was yes maybe there are some internet issues so uh, sapna has two questions for dr balakrishna yeah she wants, she wants yes. to know why is latent tb not given importance in india and what is the outcome when latent tb goes untreated maybe this has already been told but uh, it would be good if you can answer again a query yeah great uh, i i think this question was particularly addressed to dr vijayan but i would also like to uh, okay. comment a little okay. bit on this uh, uh, one thing uh, in india latent tb infection diagnosis and management is gaining uh, so much importance the country uh, the highest uh, political administrative uh, leadership is committed to that also the only thing is that we need to generate some evidence as we at this point of time in the country has evidence only of diagnosing and management and not even diagnosing managing latent tb infection among the children who are the household contacts of uh, infectious uh, uh, tuberculosis cases and the uh, plh uh, we don't test them uh, we don't have evidence really we are trying to build in evidences uh, kerala is trying to uh, be the 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 first uh, contributor towards that evidence uh, so once we have that evidence uh, about diagnosis searching for ltbi and then about management robustly then the country will definitely go uh, with a broad policy for uh, diagnosis and management i would also like to uh, inform uh, the house is that uh, see the country has already uh, uh, formulated a technical working group on latent tb infection Uh, which has met once uh, uh, some draft uh, uh, guidelines are being prepared so the for the country latent tb infection diagnosis and management is very 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 much important the country leadership is committed to that But at the same time there are some concerns the concern is about uh, reinfection of the treated individuals uh, to prevent that we should have a very strong uh, airborne infection control uh, policy and uh, management system which kerala is building into we have three types of airborne infection control management systems one is the hospital based uh, airborne infection control uh, and management system where uh, the infection control units of the hospitals are empowered with training with uh, 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 air, air air exchange uh, improvement and also personal protection measures in uh, household airborne infection control as the second one where uh, the patients are given the airborne infection control kit which contains the cloth mask for reuse and then the spittoons and uh, the disinfectant solutions with uh, good uh, health education the third one is the community level uh, uh, airborne infection control we are educating the people how to sneeze how to spit how to cough so this is required to prevent reinfection so once this is established definitely uh the country is uh moving fast towards latent tb infection diagnosis and management policy thank you thank you uh, dr shiko vijayan yes would you like to say something i'd like to compliment to that what i say concur with all the points dr balashan raised uh, however i would also like to say that we cannot see latent tb infection management in isolation so this is part of the package so that's where the importance of zero obesity is coming in i just want to emphasize that so we are actively detecting early detection of tb cases early detection of latent tb and managing all this and we are also trying to as you mentioned uh, polish mentioned uh, we are also trying to address the uh, the infection control things uh, on the, on the, on on that what is complementing specifically in india is that uh, the nutrition nikshaya portion yojana the nutrition scheme which also attracts patients to stick on the treatment and also enhance their immunity to us so there is a classical thinking of latent tb la so the paradigm shift was has got happened in the country of, uh, recently that latent tb closes the old idea has been oh, this is a symptomatic not contagious uh, active <laughs> this is very remote so now that thinking has that perception has changed with the new evidence coming in as uh, now it is seen as a spectrum based on a balance between the bacteria and the immune system so it's a 
it's a it's a way of actually uh, 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 the disease, the presenting the diseases in a different in a different way, and that also warrants treatment. So that's where we also actually have to prioritize. Where I mean, uh, I, I kind of encouraged by Dr. Suits coming now. He's actually the implementer in the field uh, as a district TB program manager. So uh, for them, actually, what is required is uh, some information, some learnings. How do we do it in the field? What are my guidelines? Uh, if something happens to the patient, what should be my next process? That is where the country is going towards the next step. And we have all I mean, as Dr. mentioned, ally is a pioneer in doing that research and coming up to the world and saying, hey, uh, these are the ways of doing it. And uh, as I understand, uh, we also identified different sites uh, to test these things. And also, uh, the learning from Vietnam and other zero TB cities like Bangladesh, Dhaka, uh, and from Pakistan. So all learnings have been distilled and synthesized, and now it will be available as publications to the larger world to test similar things in hybrid and settings as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The second question uh, from Sapna, and I also join in because I too wanted to ask that, and I'm, I would like all the panelists uh, to say something on that. That are you making any special efforts to reach out to women with latent or active TB? Uh, considering that at least in a country like India, they are usually the last in the family to access health care of any sort. So I would be happy if each of the panelists uh, replies to that. Uh, may I start with? Uh, yes, yes, please do. So, Shabha, thank you for that. And uh, Sapna, that is a very important question. What uh, uh, my experience in uh, this uh, uh, area is, uh, see, I am concentrating my work in uh, Kerala mostly where I see that uh, very good women empowerment. Uh, in Kerala, uh, women are the decision makers in the family. You know, the reason for 100% uh, immunization coverage uh, uh, for the vaccine preventable diseases in Kerala is because uh, the, the mothers take them to uh, the healthcare uh, uh, providers for vaccination. So that kind of an, uh, a decision making happens here, and the small family, you know, the family size is 3.7, where uh, the, the lady is a decision maker to limit the family size. Right. So uh, the literacy rate of uh, uh, the, the female literacy rate is 92 percent in Kerala, and you know there are some uh, women self group. It's a world renowned models like Kudumbashri. Uh, for every 20 households, there is a Kudumbashri unit uh, uh, with one female, lady member from each house. Among the 20 members, there is a health volunteer. That volunteer is treated, I mean, uh, trained in uh, most of the healthcare, uh, basic healthcare delivery, uh, public health, national public health programs. So they are a part of uh, state uh, TB elimination mission. The vulnerability mapping has been carried out by these members, these women members. And you know, there are accredited social activists in Kerala which uh, uh, who deliver the public health uh, uh, care uh, to the community. All the ASHA, accredited social health active activists are ladies. So that much of uh, women empowerment in healthcare decision making in management is happening in Kerala. So here, I don't see a room for uh, gender discrimination and missing out of any uh, lady but yes would be possible in the remote areas where the education is not much uh, there still eight percent of the ladies are not educated so it is possible so the program is keeping an eye that every household member is reached out for uh, active screening of the tb symptoms and active enrollment of the eligible or eligible individuals for latent TB diagnosis and management. So there it's the responsibility of the TB system, which is embedded within the general health system. So I don't see much of a uh, missing uh, woman member of the community from the network of latent TB diagnosis and management. Thank you. Well, well uh, Kerala is an exception in a positive way on, on many fronts. Uh, so, so that is not the rule, but glad to know that. Uh, we knew Kerala would be different. Erlina, do you have to say something? What's the situation in Indonesia? Well, in Indonesia, there is not so much a problem of gender. It's just the same between uh, 
female or uh, uh, male patient. The problem is with the diagnostic and treatment. So there is a limited access, access accessibility for diagnosis since there is a limited uh, month uh, tuberculin test uh, center and also the sometimes the uh, the region is not available and even though the treatment not all uh, Latin TB uh, will get the free treatment in Indonesia. The drug or the IPT is only for children under five and HIV uh, patient. So even though the guideline of Latin TB is already just included in our national guideline, but the implementation is uh, very weak. The coverage of uh, IPT among children is uh, about 13% only, and also around 8% among HIV, HIV patients. So, I mean, we have a problem of uh, implementation. And so it's not a problem of uh, women or men, it's just the same. Mm -hmm. Limitation in both uh, gender. Uh, because, uh, uh, as I mentioned, we do not yet uh, scaling up to other uh, target group. Even though there is stated in the uh, guideline. But now the uh, professional organization is, uh, mo is uh, moving and make uh, initiative. So, uh, outside the NTP program, we professional or the uh, physician treat, treating Latin TB uh, outside the target group of NTP. But uh, we do that not uh, massively, only those who seek for treatment. So only those who can afford it. So, so actually among educated uh, uh, population, also among uh, those uh, uh, high level economic level group because they come to the hospital or to the doctor asking whether they have a latin tb and whether they do need to be treated and they need to pay that uh, from their own pocket so it's not yet provided by the government only children under five and hiv is free for diagnosis of treatment so that is my concern. Even though free and already under a program, but the implementation is very weak. The achievement of coverage is very low. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. No, uh, what about the uh, women in, uh, in um, Vietnam? Uh, are they the ones who seek healthcare last or are there special efforts needed to reach out to them? Dr. No? Not there. Uh, okay, Dr. Sood. Dr. Okay, Sood. Now. Yes, 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 please. Yes. Um, yes thank you very much. This is very interesting that uh, talking about the roles of the woman in the TB control. Mm. In the New York, we already have um, the issue that the woman is the primary caregiver. Mm. And also the end of uh, the state of the um, health care giver for the family. Very important. If we do not have this, uh, uh, do not get um, um, woman uh, involvement in the TB control, that is a big mistake. So um, in Vietnam, we recognize this uh, recently. We um, will um, involve uh, woman union. The Vietnam, uh, Vietnamese Women Union, very big uh, society in the whole country, to become the um, uh, sub-recipient of the NTP. So they're doing with um, uh, many things. The firstly, that is uh, advocacy, communication, and uh, social mobilization for us, and uh, make the some club, make the some. Um, uh, how to say it, um, advocate for, uh, for all the community through um, with the TB, practice the TB uh, control. 
and especially they look after or own the family member. So today, uh, to the ni 19, we have um, uh, the team for the World TV Day. That is time. So in Vietnam, we uh, make the it's time for women uh, to protect their family from the tuberculosis. And we, oh, I think we, we could uh, include uh, all the effort of the um, women union in Vietnam to become the, the stronger active uh, in the TB uh, control in Vietnam. And uh, I, I hope uh, it worked. That's great. Uh, Dr. Sood, are you making any special efforts in Himachal Pradesh to reach out to women with latent or active TB? Uh, well, when I started working in TB, the first thing I noticed was that there are less number of women patients than female TB patients. Oh. So we started thinking whether it is the males who have high risk factors, so they have more TB, or mm -hmm. is it the women who have access barriers or uh, barriers to uh, accessing our uh, health system. So we found that it's a mixture of both. But uh, even the National Family Health Survey shows that there is a structural barrier in the Indian society that women need to consult other people before accessing health facilities. This decision making, well, Kerala is an exception, uh, decision making is with women. But overall, we've seen that decision making is still with the, uh, even if it is with the women, it will be there with the elderly, elderly generation. So uh, it's not easy to take a decision whether it's for an institute going for an institutional delivery, whether it's going uh, going for even a healthcare checkup. So uh, these barriers do exist, but with the induction of the accredited social health activists, so that is a workforce comprising of women. So they are able to reach to the women in a much better way, and if they improve the skills of the accredited social health activists in India, I think those uh, will be able to uh, strengthen our response much better in a more, uh, what you call, effective way. Right now, we have a created health, uh, uh, social health activists, but uh, uh, they're still not able to communicate very effectively. So we need to build on their skills. We need to uh, provide them more tools. There are some initiatives, and I think we need to continue to work on it. And uh, uh, removing the structural barriers for access to women requires much more of development and intersectoral work. And I think uh, we should think about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Emeka Odogbu from Nigeria. Emeka is a CNS Health Fellow also. And he wants to know, why should more than a quarter of the world's population be infected with latent TB in 2019? Is the world going backwards or are scientists not doing enough? Uh, Dr. Shibu Vijayan, would you like to answer that? So, you know, uh, we all know that we have been uh, talking about missing TB cases uh, quite a few years back. And that is actually the missing TB cases add to the pool of infections. And uh, the, uh, the infection, the number of infections, that is 1.6 billion I, I mentioned, is a factor of that uh, continuous not able to reach to a, uh, an, uh, 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 to the last, last level of patient. Uh, so I, I would say it's not going back. Uh, we are actually, so one is that, and one is also bettering our numbers. We have now better, uh, uh, epidemiological systems to get uh, notified, get identified. Uh, we also aggressively uh, in the chasing of missing cases, we also started actually aggressively in the private healthcare system across the world. So all these are actually reflected back uh, as actually the number of infections uh, uh, increase. It's not actually, uh, I would say that it's not, a, it's not a, a fearful factor. And also, I mean, just keep in mind, uh, all this 1.6 million is not going to represent as actually a disease. Uh, we all uh, discussed in, 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 in this conversation also, different, there are different level of risk factors uh, to break down the disease among different set of populations, uh, which is uh, immunosuppressed, which is uh, PLHI population, which is, we have been focusing on that kids, 
uh, we have been focusing on that from from uh, 10 years back so all, all these things are not out of focus of the global tv scientists uh, it's all very much in our focus now we are actually starting focusing on household contacts we know that there is a certain of the uh, index cases uh, I mean, infectious cases in uh, contacts are being infected so we are moving in the right direction uh, i think uh, this is a time to be uh, thinking positively we have now new tools new medicines uh, with lesser side effects less number of dosages uh, what we lack is the, how do we administer that so we will have uh, next next tba as we are together to speak about uh, i am i'm pretty sure that we will have more uh, encouraging examples and the systems to celebrate uh, these are ways and means of doing uh, ltbi management thank you uh, thank you uh, we have a question uh, from an anonymous attendee who wants to know how do we differentiate between subclinical and latent tb any of the panelists would like to take that difference between subclinical and latent tb yeah so that's a, a very interesting question uh, about subclinical and latent tb uh, so it needs a clinician support uh, so you simply cannot uh, rule out uh, subclinical tuberculosis means say active tuberculosis uh, which should be treated with a full course of anti tuberculosis uh, regime so there need a uh, clinician support so any latent tb infection diagnosis and management strategy should have a participation of a medical uh, consultants ideally uh we don't want to treat uh, uh, active tuberculosis case with uh, a single or two drug regime so uh, a clinical component should be there a part of it that's that's uh, i think the uh, answer is okay okay uh, i can i can yes, uh, say something yes yes please yes yeah. please do yes thank you uh, I, i think there is a important question oh. the role of the clinical uh, uh, signal to identify the latent tb Uh, infection is not is not um, feasible, but um, clinician can uh, rule out the TB for the people living with AIDS with only the four symptom. Any symptom, we need to uh, screen more for TB. But if do not have a four symptom following. Number one is any fever. Number two is a cough, any cough. Number three is the um, waste loss. Number four that is the um, um, night sweat. If the people living with AIDS without four symptom can go to the IPT, can go to the treatment for latent TB uh, treatment, latent TB infection. But for other group. is a very uh, um, difficult to uh, to to rule now so uh, we think that the uh, chatistry can come to um, to this uh, phase that the rule now the active tb and uh, to identify the latent tb infection we should have a test currently we to have a tuberculin test but the shortage of tuberculin so many countries are facing the difficulty so we expect the other tests like a ctb or dye skin test or other tests uh, with the quantiferon uh, ingra is uh, very complicated in the implementation so we only apply in the in the hospital uh, setting so uh, in conclusion it's a clinician can uh, uh, enroll uh, the the tb um, uh, infection uh, for only the hiv um people thank you thank you uh, we have overshot the time but if the panelists agree we have if they could answer one or two more questions because we have lot many questions coming up so can i ask them to wait for a while uh, and one question is on does migration of people within the country from state to state or between nations pose a challenge for latent tb uh, and uh, what measures should be taken to check uh, that we are not adding to the pool of latent tb by addressing uh, this in migrants uh, I, any of the panelists who would like to take this question 
latent TB in migrants? Is it a challenge? Uh, I can... Um, yes, please. Uh, um, yes. The migrant, uh, we see that uh, the migrant in the cross border. Oh. So um, latent TB um, infection uh, intervention must based on the, how to say, the resident. Um, it is the same, the active TB, the latent TB infection um, uh, intervention, it is more difficult if uh, with the migrant. The migrant, uh, the, the second um, category, that's uh, not a cross border. They can go by fly. So um, uh, some country uh, think that we need to check the screen, the tuberculin test first, and then they provide the latent TB treatment before they provide the visa. That I think is not, um, not um, necessary. In Vietnam, for example, uh, to the other country, they uh, propose that uh, latent TB treatment with the 12 doses uh, before they uh, go to the, to the other country. That is also the pilot uh, model, but um, we need to think more the feasibility of uh, this intervention. Okay. Anybody else would like to say something? Any of the other panelists? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. There are a lot of uh, uh, students who come to my practice to check for IGRA tests or even uh, tuberculin tests. Because they are being asked by the embassy uh, before entering uh, a country, for instance, such as uh, USA. Because there is a requirement if uh, the IGRA positive or uh, tuberculin test positive, they need to be treated as uh, a Latin TB before. Uh, this regulation uh, based on uh, Indonesia population is an endemic for TB, so uh, this is uh, the common rule. But uh, that is not happen when uh, other uh, people come into Indonesia. So I mean, we we see we face a different uh, situation now. A lot of uh, students who are going to uh, continue the study abroad. There is a uh, requirement to have to know the status of latent TB or uh, TB status. So now we do uh, a lot of uh, testing on latent TB for that reason. Thank you. Uh, now this last question, it is from Giedo Jami, uh, who says that combination of prevention options is very crucial for saving uh, TB patients. However, it is not practiced in many countries. How would you popularize these methods to maintain quality care to people with TB? And why should we use door-to-door -door program to trace those who are dropouts or migrate from one place to another to retain them? I'm sure all the panelists would like to say something on this, at least some of you. Combination of prevention options, is that made available? And what is the use of door-to-door -door program to trace those who are dropouts or move from one place to another? Yeah, can I say something? Yes. Okay. It is also important for the follow-up. Oh. Uh, if um, for the latent TB treatment follow-up is a more challenge compared to the active TB, and uh, most important, depend on the consultation. They need to uh, spend some time, more time, for the, for the consultation with, the, with our clients. If they understand, they can practice adherence. So they can, we can uh, categorize uh, several uh, kind of the clients. Some is uh, quite um, at risk with the defaulter. Some uh, other is... Um, probably is engaged with our treatment. And door to door and the tracing the defaulter necessary when we make the, the, the how to say, procedure. If um, someday missing and um, uh, some um, dose missing, 
we can uh, make the several step. Firstly, might be the make the phone call, um, uh, some message, and then um, try to make the local people to contact before we, uh, we go to door to door tracing. I think that is uh, we practice it. Yeah. Oh. So I would like to contribute to this uh, quickly. Uh, so when we speak about prevention, there are two types of there are two contexts of prevention. One is prevention of a new infection, that is the transmission. And second is prevention of uh, active TB disease among the already infected. Now, the context we are speaking about is mostly the prevention of active breakdown of uh, infection to disease. However, uh, we should have policies to prevent airborne infection by actively following up the patients on treatment that's how the DOT strategy has been uh, implemented globally. Uh, most of the countries do follow that. And yes, uh, the late, uh, delayed diagnosis and dropouts or uh, loss to follow up are the reasons for the enlarging infectious pool. And that's the reason why those are scientists are correct. The TB infection, prevalence of the TB infection is going down steeply as expected or as we need. So there we need in, uh, interventions to prevent delay in diagnosis. There, uh, the Kerala model, what is being adapted there, there is an act, uh, a vulnerable group of individuals, map group of individuals who are going to be actively traced for symptoms at their doorstep uh, to prevent delay in diagnosis. Secondly, the already running NTP is uh, robust enough here in this part of the country to uh, hold every case on treatment to prevent loss to follow up and the loss to follow up rates in uh, Kerala are as low as 2%. So the, additionally, for every patient on every person with latent TB infection on treatment also need uh, support at the doorstep uh, because the regime we are going to use are uh, potentially toxic, costly, and that's a little bit uh, complex, and uh, that needs uh, a, a complete assurance of adherence to treatment. There also we need a door-to-door -door, uh, adherence model to be implemented. So everywhere there is a relevance for a uh, door-to-door -door campaign and uh, follow-up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any, any other panelists would like to add to that? Okay, Dr. Balakrishnan has very rightly spoken and re-emphasized on the importance of infection control. We are actually failing on infection control, which is the backbone of controlling infectious diseases like TB. And then infection control demands a multi-sectoral approach and must go hand in hand with other actions uh, like active TB case finding, timely diagnosis, treatment adherence, reducing stigma, counseling, and of course, so infection control, I think, is very important to stem in or to control latent TB and to empty that pool of latent TB, which is going to lead us towards ending and eliminating active TB disease. So we now come to the close of this very exciting and informative panel discussion. Big thanks to all our panelists and participants for enriching this session. And let us remind ourselves that eradicating latent TB infection is a part of the NTB strategy is, and is a cornerstone of global TB control. It cannot be ignored. And every new case of latent TB infection is a sign of failing infection control. As someone with the active TB disease transmitted that bacteria to an uninfected person. Before we end, I want to remind you all once again that CNS will be hosting a webinar on Friday, the 22nd of March at 1 to 2 p.m. Geneva time, which will be 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. India time on bending the curve to reach a 5% decline in TB rates within the next less than two years. And Dr. K. S. S. Deva, Deputy Director General, Central TB Division of India, and Dr. Mario Rabiglion, Professor of Global Health at University of Milan, and former director of Global TB program at the WHO have kindly consented to be on the panel 
along with TV survivor and activist Prabha Mahesh. Goodbye till then, and have a good day and hope to see you again on Friday, 22nd of March. Happy Holi to all of you. And for our overseas participants, Holi is an Indian festival of colors and is being celebrated day after tomorrow. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye.